is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false God, a false God, a false God. Allah is a false God, a false, false God. Is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross then mercy and grace forgiveness and love eternity can be yours hallelujah let lord jesus christ shine forth good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are joining us welcome to live stream with dcci ministries Praying that you are not stressed and disturbed by what's happening around you. Um, that's what we are going to do tonight. Not to stress you, but talk about what is happening around us. So what is happening in Iran, what is happening around the world regarding what happened in Iran, as well as what's happening in Leicester, Birmingham, and apparently it might spread different parts of the UK too as well as what is happening in the state. So lots of things are happening. And thank you very much everyone who is joining us in the chat. Let me just um, put together, remind, remind you 
I can't remember well, but I remind you the basic principles for the chat. Um, please do not um, abuse the chat. That means please do not copy and paste the same message again and again. If you do that, it's just like stressful, probably you will be timed out. Uh, freedom of speech is welcome, so, uh, but that doesn't mean copy and paste the same message. If you want to get anyone's attention, put at sign in front of DCCI ministries. We will see that from this side. And um, try to keep your comments um, around the topics which we are discussing. That will be helpful. Uh, I can't remember if I do, I do have any other principles for the chat. Probably not. But if it comes to my mind, I will remind you. So, um, peace of Christ be with you, Phil. And also, I noticed Chris is in the chat. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. And of, on this side, I do have daughter of Christ and brother Jai on the line. Um, peace of Christ be with you, sister. How are you doing? And with you, sister, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, good. In this world where Islam is increasing in terms of its effect, its evil effect in the world, I'm still safe, though. How are you, sister? By God's grace, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, brother, peace of Christ be with you. How are you doing? Thank you, sister. Peace of Christ be with you and daughter of Christ and with all of the viewers. I'm doing well. Thank you. You are the kindness um, between us, brother. You are like I never say hi to people. You always say hi to viewers. So thank you for that. Um, so, um, guys, what have you been up to? How is life with you? Give me a quick update. Um, and then we pick up from there. Let's do gentlemen's first. Brother Jai, um, what have you been up? What have you been doing? Well, uh, I think it's going to be one of our topics today, but one of the things that came out was one of the sheikhs from America has made another blunder, another fib, another lie, and he's been exposed by his own Muslim Dawa Gandis, and they're calling him out on telling lies, uh, helping us out without realizing it. So we've been uh, putting together some videos for that, and uh, that's been our focus in the past few days. And what have you been up to for the last couple of weeks? I was on holiday getting sunbathing. Uh, no, not sunbathing, but <laughs> I was just enjoying my holiday. Uh, what have you been up to, brother? Oh, we've did, we did a couple of streams um, in your absence. We were covering some things from topics relating to what's going on to Christians in Egypt, what's happening over there. Um, actually, a couple of different things related to Egypt and the treatment of Christians there, from churches being burnt down to children being ripped out of the hands of uh, parents who adopted children, uh, and a number of other things as well. We also covered... Um, things in the Quran, like uh, child marriage and the atrocities that Islam brings. We also covered um, geckos, <laughs> the, 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 the animals that are blamed for the sins of their forefathers, according to Muhammad. And uh, yeah, so a number of other things we talked about as well, but those are just some of the streams that we've done um, since you've been away. Um, so you had a party without me. That's okay. Um, Daughter of Christ, um, how are you doing? What have you been up to? Good, sister. Um, yeah, um, just following some of the stuff that Brother Jai talked about. Um, my favorite part was uh, watching the latest short video where um, the Dawa Gang Farid exposed the other Dawa Gang um, Uthman for claiming uh, the Mus'haf was Uthman's Mus'haf which was also fun, also always fun to watch them do that to each other. Um, anything exciting you've done? No, sister, I'm, I don't I don't go and uh, for holidays and sunbathe, sister. I just stayed here in a cloudy England, unfortunately. I was thinking about it when I was doing sun, uh, uh, dealing with mosquitoes. There were mosquitoes. So I've been to stay. Oh. I'll call it holiday, even though like it wasn't holiday, but it was just so relaxed. We've done not much. There are mosquitoes there. 
Can you believe <laughs> like it's not Africa, it's the state. They have mosquitoes. Oh. And another interesting fact about um, state is they don't have green man, they've got white man um, for crossing the road. White? Yeah, so we've got like green man on the traffic light, so you cross oh, yeah. the road. And they've mm. got white man, they don't have green man. Oh, Brother Joe would know about that. He can, maybe you can explain the color difference. It's not only color difference, even like he is not walking, it's just funny. It just takes time for you to figure out like what you need to do. Yeah. Well, as long as you had fun, sister, with the mosquitoes and that. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, on a serious note, um, yes, while I'm having fun around the world, um, Queen died. Queen of England died, and what we saw is um, queens dies, kings dies, young people die, old people die, nobodies die, but Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, is still alive. So that's a good news. So UK has a new king, and also in other part of the world, people are being killed. Um, I'm sure some of you already picked up on the news. Um, so what we are going to do is tonight we are going to talk about what happened in Iran and how it's affecting and what is not being spoken. Um, and then we will talk about what's happening in Britain as well as in the state. So in Iran, a uh, 22 years old, beautiful young lady. She's like pretty beautiful. Um, Apparently, she's not put, she didn't put her hijab well. Um, and then she, she got arrested and she ended up being dead. So there are people in Iran um, and in different parts of the world are kind of trying to make a voice for this. Uh, let me get the first reaction. Let's say, let's go to thought of Christ first. Um, beloved, yes, sister. what are your thoughts? 22 years old girl in Iran. She's got hijab, but her hijab is not put um, the way it has been asked. Um, she got arrested and then um, she ended up being dead. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, they're just following Surah 33, verse 59. It does say, you know, wear the hijab or you'll be abused. That's what it said. She didn't wear it properly because Muhammad said it ought to cover everything except the hands and face. As you can see from the picture, the, her, her neck was showing. And so she was taken into custody of the police. Healthy 22-year-old. And she was abused. And she died in their hands. It's not, obviously, 22-year-olds don't just drop dead all the time. Something must have happened, sister. They killed that young woman. That's what happens when you follow Surah 33, verse 59. So she's got, she's got hijab. Yeah. But it is not put in the way it has been required. Yeah. So Surah 24 kind of gives us, the, gives us, Islamic description of how they need to cover and then you've got the hadith. And in Iran, you've got to put the scarf on. So it's not like, oh, my body, my choice, or I can wear whatever I want to wear, no. So you need to uh, follow the law, Islamic law. And if you are not covered the way you were told to cover, um, you get stopped and you get arrested. And that happens. You end up being dead. So she is daughter to someone. She is sister to someone. She is cousin to someone. And her life is taken away. She is only 22 years old. Why? Because her hijab is not put the way it has been required. It's not like she doesn't have hijab. It is not the way um, she's been told to put Brother Yes, I've seen Muslim Dawa preachers, Muslims who are not 
outright justifying this, but they are saying, hey, we have laws in our countries, just like you have laws in your countries. Uh, in your countries, you can't walk out naked in the street. And so our countries, you can't, you know, dress as, as you wish. You have to follow our laws. So they're justifying what's happening. They're saying that if you don't, um, as Dad of Christ said, dress as Muhammad said, uh, that woman should dress, then you should be killed for it. So this is the face of Islam and the supporters of that. You have Muslims um, in the UK who are very supportive of this without outright saying, I support her death. They're saying they support these laws. So by implication, they're, they're, they're saying that, you know, this is something that's acceptable and this is what should happen. So this is um, the face of Islam and everybody can see it. Anyone who is disgusted by this should be disgusted at Muhammad himself. They should be disgusted at Islam. Um, don't uh, make it into politics or about this particular country or that country. No, this is about Muhammad strictly. And this is about his politics, you know, if you want to say that his religion. And so this is uh, the dangers, the evils of Islam to kill a woman ultimately resulted in her death for not wearing uh, the head covering or, you know, the, the body covering the way that Muhammad uh, taught. And it's not only uh, uh, Masa Amini. I remember a couple of years ago, there were people again who were like simply just taken by police and then they got lost under the police custody. Again, the women are being killed um, simply they didn't want to put the hijab the way they were forced to do so. And since the protests started um, over a week ago now, like on the news, you get to hear another woman who has been um, part of the protest is being like killed or lost. Um, and part of the protest, what they are doing is um, women are cutting their hair or they are cutting um, their, um, their hijab. And it was also on social media, someone said, not putting hijab is a crime. Burning hijab is a crime. Cutting hijab is a crime. And in that line, it wasn't saying taking the life of 22 years old girl for dress code is a crime. Um, so I'll, I'll read um, or I'll read Surah 24, verse 31. So that's the reference um, Daughter of Christ brought to us. And then after that, we read 3359. Because it, like, as it's been expressed, it is not what is happening, what politics is taking place in different parts of the world. It is that when the teachings of Islam is being, what is the word? Pushed on, pushed on people. This is what is what happens. She's not even Muslim. Like if you think like if she's not a Muslim, what will happen? So she's a Muslim. If she wasn't a Muslim, think about it. What will happen? So um, Surah twenty four verse thirty one. And the believing woman to reduce some of their visions. Oh well, I can't read this one. I need to pull it from the internet. So that part is being teared up. Um, let me just get that from internet. Sorry. Surah 24 verse 31 is the one that I'm going to focus. Probably there will be some issues with the translations. Um, but let's see. Um, can you see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Yeah. So um, let me see what you see. Yeah. Surah um, 24, verse 31. And tell the believing woman to lower their gaze and guard their chastity, and not to reveal their adornment, except what normally appears. Let them draw their veils over their chest, 
and not reveal their hidden adornments, except to their husbands, their fathers, their fathers-in-law, their sons, their stepsons, their brothers, their brother's sons or sister's sons, their fellow woman, um, their fellow woman, those bond women in their possessions, male attendees with no desire, or children who are still unaware of women's nakedness. Let them not stomp their feet, drawing attention to their drawing attention to their hidden adornments. Turn to Allah in repentance all together, all believers, so that you may be successful. So, cover up yourself. Okay, from chest. And then when you look at the Islamic tradition, it kind of tells you like what you can show, only eyes, hands, and feet, correct? And then, let me get rid of this. Let me put Surah 33, verse 59, which tells you what happens if you, if you do not do that or why you need to cover up. Sorry, Surah 33, verse 59 tells you why you need to do that. Uh, Share screen, press that thing, press that thing, and then here it is. So, Surah 33, verse 59. O Prophet, ask your wives, daughters, and the believing woman to draw their clocks over their bodies. In this way, it is the most likely they will be recognized and not be harassed. And Allah is all-knowing and all-merciful. You will get the translation which talks about they won't be abused. And then Ibn Qatir is going to say, uh, so they, they are not whore. So the one who are not covered, they are whore. Not very nice, isn't it? I, I just wanted to say, sister, um, in case people are confused about this, in the Arabic, it doesn't say ask. It says say, qul which means say it's a command. So there's not like an option here. Usually when you say ask, it's like, you know, you have an option, you know, ask someone so to do this or that. There's no option here. It's saying say, like command them to do this. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Um, are you able to see my, am I still sharing screen? Yes, we can see that. It says say right up. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I just brought the, what, what do you call that? Hunting on this word. And then it says, say exactly um, yeah i just picked up this translation so i didn't kind of just in case people thought there was an option there because like i said usually when you say ask it's like you have a you know request like yes or no but there's no yes or no here this is a command that they have to do this otherwise they'll be abused okay so what kind of abuse we are talking can someone unpack that can someone tell me um let's go with ladies first daughter of christ what are your thoughts on Surah 24, verse 31 and Surah 33, verse 59 regarding what is happening in Iran? Uh, Iran is uh, following it. That's my, my say on it. It's very obvious. The verse says to, like Brother Jai says, to tell the women to do this. When Allah says to do something, you do it. And then surah 33 verse 59 it says why you should do it is that they will be known and not abused or harassed that means there will be abuse and harassment which is legitimate because allah didn't say don't harass he didn't say don't abuse he said they will be if they don't it's better you know that they cover so they don't so iran took it they harassed her in the street they took took her to punish her and they admitted that they went a bit far she died in their hands while they were doing it but um the quran didn't say you know that's what the quran said what will, will happen and they followed it so it's time for this these verses to not be, be followed anymore for the sake of women in iran and everywhere else um brother jai yeah i, I wanted to say that this is like kind of a, a trick thing you know, either you, the, the, you get the impression if you wear the hijab, then you're going to be safe from abuse. 
So here's an instance where someone is not wearing a hijab and they're not safe from abuse. So it says like that's what that's what it says. So there's going to be um, a punishment. There's going to be abuse that comes from Muslims, by the way, from Muslims abusing her, eventually leading to her death. But the flip side of it, what I was saying at first was that, and 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 you sisters are both former Muslims, so maybe you can share some experiences, or maybe you know muslim women who have had this experience but i i've heard heard this especially in countries like saudi arabia women who are covered except for their eyes showing they still get abused so whether you wear it or you don't wear it you're going to get abused by muslims by the way it's it's not telling you where the abuse is coming from in the verse but i'm telling you what happens is whether you wear it or you don't wear it you're going to receive abuse much um sexual abuse and sexual harassment in uh, muslim countries where they are forced to wear the the coverings and the hijab and all of that stuff and other things too where just their eyes are showing and so they're not safe they're not safe um from abuse whether they wear it or they don't wear it is what i'm trying to say yeah like i think um Masa is another evidence on, on what you are saying because she was wearing hijab. And not only she's been abused, but she's been killed. Exactly. Um, so what I put on the screen was um, um, Hadith, which is, I don't know if it is too small to see it. From my side, it looks like it's too small to see it. But um, Hadith is talking about how um, this is Sahih Bukhari. It is not an option, but it is for obligate, obligatory. Yeah. No, obligatory, like, right. Yes, so you have to put it. You don't have it. Like, you can't say, oh, it's my choice. I can put it or I cannot put it. I guess that takes us back what Daughter of Christ was saying. Like, this is, um, they are just practicing what Islam is saying. And then when someone doesn't meet up uh, with their criteria, then that's what you get to see. Here is Sahih Bukhari, tells how you need to put it up. So you just cover. Yeah. You cover your heads, faces, all of it. And, and you know, it's also interesting to note is that um, Iran, a, a Shia country, they observe these same rules. So whether, no matter what, uh, sect of Islam you are, Sunni or Shia, they all observe this. As you can see, they, they kill people for not wearing it the way that they think it should be worn. So whether they're Sunni, whether they're Shia, it doesn't, they don't escape from this. It's not only they don't escape from this, they can't even escape from hell if they don't put it up the way. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, so had it on the screen. Um, this is Sahih Muslim. Um, if you are not covered up, you won't enter paradise. So it's a putting fear in the hearts of people. So it's not like my body, my choice. It is not, I can wear whatever I want to wear. Islam doesn't allow that. Yeah, there's no such option. And as I said, there are many Muslims on social media um, who are who are prominent, who are, you know, looked up to as these are you know, the popular Muslim speakers, and they're defending this. They're saying, like I said at the, at the beginning, that they're, they're saying things like, we have laws in our countries that have to be obeyed. Uh, you know, Western countries and any other country has laws that need to be obeyed. So they're, they're really justifying this. Uh, th so they're not saying like, this is not Islam. They're not saying things like, uh, oh, you guys are being Islamophobes. Or so. They're saying, no, this is Islam. This is the face of Islam. So some Muslims are actually owning up to this. And this is just, you know, showing us all uh, that this is the, these these are the evils th these are the evil things that happen when Islam becomes dominant and uh, of course uh, you know anyone who is an unbeliever can be ruled by Satan but we see it so portrayed so um, the, the the will of the devil so well portrayed in Islam he fits so, um, in there so well is what I'm trying to say yeah and let me just understand that. Um... People who has influence on social media over Muslim community or Muslim countries, they are stating, well, that is the law of that land. So you need to respect and you need to obey if you are in that land. Is that correct? Exactly. 
Exactly. Okay, so, for example, when you come to England, uh, I, I was going to think what are the laws, but doesn't come to anything to my mind. Well, the example that he gave was, you know, you couldn't walk around the street uh, like with nothing on. You need to be clothed or something. So he's trying to use clothing as uh, as as a parallel to it. He thinks that that's an equivalent kind of thing. Like if you're walking without any clothes on at all, that's the same thing as, you know, not being properly dressed with the hijab. Well, I guess that brings up the question of um, then why a couple of years ago when France um, expressed their concerns and objections towards hijab, um, towards burqa, why Muslim world kind of stand up and then say, no, we want to wear that. So under the law of France, you can't wear that. So you can even go to prison if you are like walking around with burqa. So why Muslims are not saying, oh, that's the law of that country. If you don't like it, move to the different part of the world where you like the law. Exactly. So I'm uh, posting, it's up to you if you want to share it or not. Maybe you can recognize who it is if you want to advertise them or not. But I'm just saying these are popular speakers. They're, they're well known uh, to, the U, to the UK Muslims and to the general Muslim public. And they're defending this. They're, they're defending it. Um, and they are... Uh, basically, as I said, uh, saying this is Islam and this is what we're going to do. And so just showing everybody this is the face of Islam. Uh, this is the evil of Islam. Uh, how, do I sh how do I show that on the screen? Um, it doesn't come up on the... Share the share screen thing doesn't... Uh, let me... Let me see this. Or maybe this one. Maybe this. Okay. Do you see it on the screen? Yes, yes, there we go. Yeah. See it. So this is um, Mr. Muslim Missionary. Uh, brother, would you like to read this? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so here it is. Um, so since we have it on the screen, Hamza Tsortsis, um, he's saying the it's my choice narrative is incoherent. Do you have an option free of any coercion to disobey the law? No, you obey or face a legal punishment. To frame diso sorry to to frame obedience to Islamic laws as optional unveils no pun intended one's liberal and secular ideological commitments. There's five parts to it, but as you can see, he's justifying. Um, in a liberal society, does one have the option to disobey the law free of any coercion? No, they do not. If someone wanted to walk naked in public, it would be illegal and punishable. So there is a key question we should answer. Who or what should be the source of the law? And of course, he's going to try to justify because Allah is the source of the law. Um, that, you know, that's why we should follow it. So, yeah, there's like five parts to the post. Um, we can go through it, but you guys can get the general idea from it here. As you can see, he says like Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Yeah, exactly. His laws are the best for humanity. Well, I don't know how can his laws be, be best for humanity because his laws caused life of someone 22 years old. It's not only like one person is like going on. Like you get to see every other day someone is um, went missing or someone is just died again. Not died, actually. It's not like they just had a food poison or heart attack. They've been killed. How can this be good for humanity? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, this is definitely not the mercy to, to mankind. Yeah, and remember, Surah 3359 finishes like, let me put that on the screen again because it's already in here. Share screen. See, it finishes with Allah is all forgiving and merciful. Right, right. He's all forgiving and merciful, his laws are taking the life of young, beautiful woman and lots of other beautiful women. What kind of mercy is that? It doesn't look merciful to me at all. I don't think it is wise at this stage even to say that might be like merciful to um, don't turn up to his family and then say, yeah, Allah is merciful because the law of Allah took his life, took her life. 
Yeah, it's very, very sad, very tragic. Uh, thought of Christ, do you have last thoughts, last comments on this? Um, um, I see. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, I see that our gangs do this a lot. Um, they're comparing the law of Allah to the law of other countries and using extreme examples like walking naked. First of all, if somebody walks naked in the street in this country, the police do not take them and kill them. This is not the same. Uh, exactly. they, want to, they want to justify their barbaric, 7th century, disgusting, jungle-like law where people get killed for the smallest things with somebody walking naked. No one's advocating walking naked. But you don't take it to the extreme of some. If someone shows is showing her neck or if her hijab's lips, that's it. Let's take her life. If you want those kind of laws, go live in the jungle somewhere outside of humanity and don't advocate it here in the West, and don't compare it to normal, you know, reasonable laws, because that's insane. That's all I want to say. Sister. Um. So you, uh, your comment is on. So you, you are saying, well, there is a problem with the law of Allah and how it has been practiced and um, how the law in this part of the world is being practiced. You do not get, uh, you do not get um, killed by the police um, if you are walking naked. But in different parts of the world, it's not like she doesn't have hijab. Put that in your mind. She already has hijab on her. But because her hijab is not put the way uh, it has been required, like her hair little bit been shown, therefore she's dead. Yeah. Just they use the idea of law and punishment to say all laws are fair game. So what if there's a law to say pedophilia is, is okay, which is a, in Islam? Is that the same as, let's compare it to other normal laws all over the world? It's nonsense. Your laws, Islamic laws, are barbaric. They're inhumane. They, they, they belong in the bin. They don't belong to, uh, it, it, to the earth to be practiced. Otherwise, you see people losing lives for small, for small, small, tiny things, which is not what God wants. And if you attribute it to God, then that just shows that the God, the, the God is the devil who hates life, wants to destroy life at every opportunity. Islamic God, yeah. Islamic, Islamic God. God. Yeah, Islamic God destroys humanity, destroys families. Um, I think, Ja, you said, like, you, you made a video about lizards. Um, even, like, in Islam, lizards are not safe, let alone women. Correct. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. And by the um, way, the faster you kill the lizard, the, the, the more um, good points you get the more good rewards you get. Yeah, in, in what's happening in, in, the, in, in Iran now, like which is kind of spreading different part of the world, as people are kind of seeing, okay, now, if you do not put, if you do not obey what they are telling you, this is what's going to happen to you. So out of force, out of fear, you get paralyzed and then you do what you are asked. That means you have to think the way they want you to think. You have to act the way they want you to act. Because they put that fear. They they kill, they take the life of, they kill someone. They killed someone plus lots of someone. And then in this part of the world, people are just like, oh, you can wear whatever you want to wear. You can choose whatever you want to choose to wear. Um, there is a question, um, beloved, would you like to respond to that? What do you think about banning the hijab? Um, we're not the same as Islam. Um, where I get my, the spirit of how I do things is from the Bible and the Bible doesn't, doesn't, um, tell me to force the God of the Bible doesn't force. So we're not the same as them. Um, so no, I wouldn't ban anything um we do not bully people's conscience if they want to put that thing on their head it's up to them um i would preach the gospel to her to the lady wearing the hijab not ban but preach the gospel um with freedom with grace um to tell her that the 
when I see a lady wearing the hijab, my problem is not the hijab. My problem is that she's following a religion that she's she's taking that to hell. That's my problem. So that I would preach the gospel to her. And when she comes to Christ, then she can take that thing off, which is a symbol of a religion that is not from God and is taking people to hell. What about you, sister? We cannot force someone to love God and obey his law. We cannot force. So we, when we look at the time of Jesus, when we look at the, like, when we look at the Bible, plus when we look at the Christian history, we were able to live among other people. In the time of Jesus, many different people, many different cultures were there. Jesus did not force himself to anyone. People, people saw he raised the dead and then they choose to walk away. He didn't force them. We can live in a society where if people, if someone chooses to not follow Jesus, we can still live in, in the same society. But I cannot force, I cannot force someone to love Jesus and obey his law. Um, our glorious gospel sets us free. When we are in Christ, life becomes life life becomes different. Like as a Christian, I cannot wear what I want to wear. Like I am under the authority of the scripture and I need to wear modest. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna chop someone's head off because they are walking with half naked or walking with bikini or putting burqa on. All I can all we can do is as daughter of Christ say this. We let people hear the glorious gospel, and once they respond, respond to the gospel, Lord will work in their hearts and in their minds to set them free. But so far, um, hijab and or burqa, all the lines of it, putting, uh, putting the life of Muslim woman as well as non-Muslim woman in danger. My life is in danger because people are wearing hijab. I'm not wearing hijab, therefore I can be abused. Life of Muslims are in danger. They, while they are wearing hijab, they are still being abused. By Mr. Muslims, of course. Uh, Jai, any thoughts on um, banning the dress code, banning the hijab? I, I can't add much more to what um, you sisters already said. The idea of banning the hijab, uh, like we're, what we're talking about here is the, the laws that Muslims use to punish or say, let's say, enforce people to wear. We're talking about the punishments that they're giving for people not wearing it properly or not wearing, yeah, not wearing it the way that Muhammad instructed or how their religion instructs so that that's really what our main focus is we're talking about the face of islam and what the punishments are in and uh we want to show the evil of islam so we're not interested in banning hijab or not uh that's not really our point our point is that the muslims will kill literally for not wearing it according to you know the way they deem fit I'm not distracted. I'm just doing something else. Uh, I think that's a distraction, but it's okay. I'll continue on then the answer. <laughs> um, I think that, you, you know, um, I agree that this is a point of, of modesty. And if people want to dress any way they feel is modest, um, that's up to, uh, you know, even um, our sisters in Christ, if you feel to dress in a way that that is you know convicted you're convicted to wear things or to dress in a certain way that's uh you you consider to be modest um we're not talking about banning things or enforcing things what we're talking about again is the punishments that muslims will give out for not properly wearing uh the hijab so yeah that, that's all love uh love is given freely and we respond to it freely we can't force anyone to love Lord Jesus Christ. We can't force anyone to love Jesus Christ. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so that is what's happening around the world with hijab. And lots of people are making a noise um, to kind of making their stand among um, among the hijab. One of the practical things we can do as a Christian, which Daughter of Christ um, actually pointed out, that um, the people who are covering themselves and putting, uh, making discrimination between um, men and women, they are desperately need our glorious gospel. So we step in as a Christian, engage with them, and uh, we preach the gospel. Uh, other practical thing you can do is you can get in touch with your MP and then bring awareness that some people are forced to wear it. So it is not a choice. It is a force even in England. Uh, bring that to attention of your MP and then ask help uh, from your MP. Um, any other practical advice anyone has um, we can do as a Christian? Well, oh, uh, yeah, go ahead, sister. Uh... If you know any uh, of your friends uh, or people you know who are Muslim ladies who are wearing the hijab, and you have a feeling that they are forced, gently forced by family or society or mosque or anything into it, even in the UK or other Western countries, um, I would encourage them to make a stand uh, and take it off now. Uh, we got a wave in Iran of women, Muslim women, not even Christian or anything, Muslim women, getting sick of this now. It's time that other Muslim women, and you know who you are, um, I know that there's a feeling of I need to wear it because of my family and you tell everyone else uh, outside of your family that oh, I'm choosing but inside you know you're not choosing it. If you're not wearing that thing, it's against your will, you're not comfortable in it, start taking it off if you're in a country that's safe to do so. I And as uh, Christians and other people who care about the freedom of others, I would encourage them to take it off if they're not comfortable to do so. Okay, thank you. Um... So let's move on to the state. So we've been to Iran. Now let's travel to state. Um, certain things are happening in the US. Um, I'm not talking about how people lost their life in, um, in Florida because of the weather conditions. I'm not talking about people are just like gunned down. Um, I'm talking about how um, Mr. Mr. Ketchup said uh, or footnote inserter um, stepped in and lied pu publicly <laughs> for $5,000. Um, let's talk about that because, um, Brother Joy, do you want to kind of give us the introduction? And then I've got someone on the line. I'm going to take him in and then we get to hear the background of it. Sure. So we have some Christian brothers who are on the ground challenging muslims week by week a certain challenge to produce an original quran that's penned or authored by the original committee that uthman had set up we want an uthmanic quran and the challenge has gone up to five thousand us dollars if they can produce this manuscript of the quran the infamous Sheikh Uthman ibn Fibin ibn Farooq has <laughs> he he has come up with a book that he claims meets this challenge. He says this is the Mus'haf, this is the 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 copy of the Quran from Uthman. He thinks he met the challenge. He's demanding he gets his five thousand U.S. dollars. So. That's kind of the lead up and go ahead, sister. Okay. So um um Jai, what would you do with five thousand dollars? What I would do with five thousand dollars? Okay, what I would do with the five thousand dollars is let's say if I were to meet the challenge or just <laughs> what I would well, I just had five thousand. Let's say you are desperate for five thousand dollars. You <laughs> Met the challenge, so you've got the five thousand dollars of okay. um, Bible or the Quran. 
what would you uh, do with that money? Okay, well, I'm not a Muslim, so I wouldn't book a flight to Saudi Arabia to kiss the black stone and to, you know, do go around the, the hills that they have. I wouldn't do that stuff. I wouldn't throw so stones at the devil either. Uh, I would uh, ask my brothers or sisters who's in need, what's a ministry that we can uh, support? Are there people in our area that we can, you know, give this money to? How can we have charity? That's what I would personally, if you're asking me. Uh, I don't know what a Muslim would do with it. Probably they would do the first thing I said. Okay, so you wouldn't give your 5,000 to the plane um, ticket to Saudi to kiss the Blackstone? I would not do that. That's even, for sure. even, even though Blackstone is going to forgive your sins? Um, if you want to um, stay on this topic for just a few more seconds, I do have a video of the Blackstone. If you, because just to entice, maybe you know, just to, it might get Muslims kind of excited. But if we can just just hold on for just a few more seconds, I'll show you exactly yeah, what we're talking about here. Um, <laughs> so yes. show us. Yeah, I'll show you just a second. Lots of people, lots of people want to kiss that. So like five thousand, yeah. cover it up. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure how I can share this screen. Actually, let me see. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll show you. Um, this is what Muslims would probably do with the money. Um, I apologize. I'm not able to make it full screen. But here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that's what a Muslim would do with the money. They would <laughs> go to that stone and maybe if they're in good shape and they can get past the crowd and they don't get trampled to death that's what a muslim would probably do with the money okay um that, that didn't look very that looked like so touchy it didn't, anyway. it didn't look too appealing to you <laughs> no it, I, don't, I don't like physical touch that's like so people are so close to one another and then people are climbing top of each other and then you've got man who just stands next to the black stone probably that is actually a video is where his feet is on the black stone. But anyway, daughter of Christ, what would you do with five thousand dollars? Well, um, I heard that um, the sales of ketchup have gone up, so I would invest in a ketchup company. Um, a lot of it has been used for all kinds of stunts these days. Uh, I don't know why Brother Anthony offered them five thousand dollars. Their life for free, so uh, yes, yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> Okay, so Thought of Christ is going to invest on the ketchup factory because it can be used for fake blood and lots of other things. Um, and on the screen, we've got a brother who has got the $5,000. I hope he has. And that's the man who offered the $5,000. So, um, Brother Anthony from the Bible or the Quran is on the line. Peace of Christ be with you, brother very much i'm glad to be here and okay uh, brother are you aware that we cannot see your face yes i know somehow it's my camera is not working i have no idea i have the same problem yesterday because i don't want i don't want to say now you are the man with the five thousand dollars you are hiding your face that's, I don't right. Want to that's right that's right yes okay uh, let me see if I can do something. Okay, I need you to first of all meet your YouTube brother. Meet your YouTube. And then once you meet your, your YouTube, and then we get to meet with the man with the $5,000. Now everyone is going to bring lots of crowns because now we know what you can do with $5,000. I think. Thought of Christ is the one who kind of comes with the investment mind. We can invest in the ketchup company, factory, and then take it from there. Brother? Yes, I'm here actually. I'm trying to turn my camera on, but somehow it's not working. Let me go back to my iPhone. So I don't know why it's something wrong. 
Okay, okay. I'm gonna mute you. You fix that, and then once you fix that, unmute yourself. Okay. Once we see your face, because you are the man with five thousand dollars, lots of things can happen. Uh, so, brother Anthony is the brother, one of the brothers um, who goes to that park and um, kind of try to respond to the uh, Muslim objections as well as tries to keep Islam and Islamic Dawah guns accountable. Um, I don't think he set up ketchup factory yet, um, but he knows people who are very much involved with the ketchup factories. So hopefully he will give us the background of what happened, why he put up this $5,000 and um, 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 why he put up this five thousand dollars, <laughs> brother? I need you to meet your YouTube. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. Same all of you guys. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, so tell us who you are. You okay. know, you've got five thousand dollars. What else we should know about you? I've uh, been on Balboa Park, thanks to Sheikh Uthman. I never planned, I never have a plan to go in Balboa Park because of his lying to all the Christian and Muslim people. And that make me encouraged to go there. And it's been almost over seven or eight months, I believe that. And uh, I've been talking to Uthman and his Dawa team and uh, then I started, then every started uh, with me. So I'm glad people, they are coming forward and helping me. And uh, we have been asking so many things on the ground, especially who wrote the Quran. And if they can bring that Uthmani Quran, we will give them $5,000. But nobody claimed that for almost eight months. But suddenly, Sheikh Uthman, I believe that he came so early in the park and tried to up bring uh, the Quran, Uthmani Quran, and tried to get the five thousand dollar. Okay, so let me so, let me just understand that. So it's been eight months. You are offering five thousand dollars for someone who brings the Quran of Uthman from six hundred fifty-two. That's right. And for eight months, there was like no voice and then suddenly last Sunday uh, a manuscript turned up the park uh, with the request requiring five thousand dollars correct that's right okay so what happened on that Sunday actually before that why would you why do you question the uh, reliability of the Quranic manuscript so that you are asking Uthman's Quran that will be my question and then after me if Daughter of Christ or Brother Jai has any questions, I will ask them to ask, bring up their questions, and then we will ask you to take us to last Sunday. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I see Uthman is always lying to the on the ground all the time in Balboa Park. They're saying Quran has been has been preserved, never been changed. There's only one Quran. Then we find out that there is not the original Quran. Even they have, they are reading a Hafs Quran. And where's Uthmani Quran? The one, you know, Abu Bakr, uh, after Abu Bakr, uh, Uthman who made those copies and the rest of it burn it out. So we want to know where is that? I said it's a better way to get this Quran if I offer to Muslims. So, you know, when money will talk. So I just give offer. So I thought probably some Muslim will people, we couldn't find out. I asked for uh, everybody, so they couldn't find it. So I said, let's go to give offer to people. So give me, uh, if I offer $5,000, so somebody can bring and some stupid will be, bring the Uthmani Quran, which we know that they don't, we don't, they don't have it. And after eight months, that was Mr. Sheikh Uthman became stupid to bring that Uthmani Quran, which is turned out to be, it's not the Quran, it's written by Dr. Tahir, you know, so, I'm glad it's not the normal person bring it that the Sheikh Uthman tried to get the $5,000 and he was asking me for last Sunday, which he came so earlier and he, he has been off from the park for almost four months. And suddenly I believe he bought this uh, Uthmanic 
uh, Quran, which is not. So he thought probably we're going to make the food to people. And he brought it like 11 o'clock. He has been in the park 11 o'clock, which is he never been in the park that earlier. He always come around four o'clock or, you know, late. But he has been off for last four months. So it was a surprise for us because we have been asking to come over, but he never come. So last Sunday he show up with the Quran and the rest of you seen what happened after we have the video. He doesn't even want me to make the video. He doesn't want me to put the booth even because he's so afraid to be the coverage. We can do it from him. From him. So that was really sad. I've been bugging, begging him for give me time to let me set up the booth. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. So I feel so sad for him. He, he has been doing Dava for so many years. He has been lying to people for so many years. And he brought the Quran, which is not the Quran even. If somebody, normal person bring it, it should be okay because we, they don't have the knowledge of it. But the Sheikh who's claimed to be master in Hadith and he has been doing for a long time, that's very shame of him, which is try to lie. Okay, so um, let me just summarize the tradition a little bit for um, our viewers. Um, according to Islamic tradition, when Muhammad died, Quran was not compiled. Soon after his death, under the Abu Bakr, first Quran is being compiled because people were dying and then they were losing the Quran. And then Quran is being compiled second time under Uthman around 652 with the committee of four people um, because Muslims were calling one another kafir disbeliever because of the way Quran was recited. Um, when second Quran is being compiled, they kind of burned, it's been ordered all the Quranic materials to be burned, even they Hafsa wasn't okay with that, they uh, got rid of Hafsa's Quran, that was the first Quran soon after Hafsa died. Um, and uh, when second Quran is being compiled, they, it's been copied and then sent it to the Muslim majority cities. So. Uh, according to Islamic tradition, it might even go up to nine different cities. So, like, there's supposed to be nine copies of the Uthmanic manuscripts we should have in our possession. Even though that manuscripts were different from one another, but there should be around nine complete manuscripts from 652. And Brother Anthony is asking Muslim missionaries to bring a copy, any copy, of the uh, Uthman's Quran. Uh, so we check it. Um, he's been asking that for a while and then finally he decided, well, I'm gonna offer people $5,000 because money can buy certain things. Hopefully they will get the Quran. And what happened is magical happened. Um, <laughs> after eight months, after eight months, um, people couldn't stay away from $5,000. <laughs> Uh, after eight months, um, Muslim missionary turned up the park and produced a Quran. He brought up um, Cairo manuscripts um, to make a case this is the Quran of Uthman because in the title it was saying this is the Quran attributed to the Uthman. Uh, sister, and, before we move on, before we move um, on, can I just add a point? Yes. Okay, I want to I want to help our brother Anthony the next time he comes to you with a mushaf. I want to just just for your sake, brother, and for the sake of anyone else, we want to help people identify this mushaf. So we're gonna just read a little story together, and it's gonna help us identify what to look for when we are trying to identify the mushaf or the copy of the Quran from Uthman. So this is a story narrated to us by Ibn Kathir in Al Bidayah wa Nihaya where uh, our sister, daughter of Christ, uh, translated for us on another stream. I recommend people go back to what's called Love in the House of Muhammad, Caliphate's Wife and Daughter. And that's going to be on this channel. <clears throat> and so just to help identify this particular mushaf, it talks one about the death them. of... Yeah, this is one of them. Yeah, this is, talk yeah, this is talking about the death of Uthman. So... One of the things that you want to look for on this Mus'haf, as it's said in the story, that as Uthman was being killed by Muslims, 
he was being choked out and as he lost consciousness uh they left him there thinking that he died and then someone came in and hit and, and stabbed him with a sword and then there was a mushaf that was standing by Uthman, so a drop of blood fell on this mushaf. So what you have to do is you have to go to chapter 2 in the Quran, verse 137, chapter 2, verse 137, and then you should be able to identify this speck of blood. And, and, and just one more way to identify it, you want to look for a footprint. The son of Abu Bakr, Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, actually after he stabbed according to another narration he stabbed Uthman in the mouth with an iron rod and then he kicked the mushaf of Uthman with his foot like a football so so two things you want to do you want to go to chapter 2 verse 137 and you want to see if you can find a speck of blood there and then another thing you want to find the footprint of Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr because he kicked the Quran of mushaf, the mushaf of Uthman like a football so if Muslims I, I, come up to you and <laughs> Yeah, let, you. let me understand that. Let me understand that. Okay. So, one of the so that there are nine copies, okay, approximate. One of the copies must have a blood, which is on Surah two, verse one hundred thirty-seven. Whose yeah. blood is it? Uthman. Uthman. Yeah. The guy who put the Quran together, okay, who was killed by Aisha's brother. Aisha's brother killed Uthman, Uthman's blood is in the Quran. Okay? Yes. And then, also Jai is suggesting, I'm not sure how practical it is, but also, uh, like when you go to the police stations, you do fingerprint. In this one, you need to do footprint. So we need to yes. look yes. for the footprint. If the Quran, which has been shown to you as, this is Uthman's Quran, has a footprint in it. So this is what you are looking for, blood and footprint. But you can have like eight, which doesn't have it, but one of them is supposed to have it, okay? Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, yes. <laughs> By the way, the Muslims are, are not sure how many. Some say there's four, some say up to 11, I've heard. So they're all yeah. over the place. But one of them, you can and have identified, uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to look for the footprint no. and the blood. So. Okay, okay, okay. Now, <laughs> now I am susp suspicious. Because Mr. Ketchup Man can simply put ketchup in Surah 2 verse 100. <laughs> oh, yes, no. you can do that. Yeah, That's why you yeah. invest. That's why you invest. You see? <laughs> <laughs> and then he might say, that was the blood of Uthman. Yes. And I saw a picture where he had these white running shoes. And then he might just put those running shoes on it and then say, well, this is the Uthman's footprint. My name is Uthman. This is my capture, which can seen as my blood, and then my footprint. Yes. That occasion, Brother Anthony, you need to say, we are looking for the Caliph Uthman's blood and Caliph Uthman's footprint. Not this Uthman, not the one who is alive, but the Caliph Uthman and who is no dead. ketchup either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no ketchup. Don't bring, don't bring chips or fish and chips um, to the to the park. We can expect this from this man anything. He can lie for anything. He can do it for money. He can lie. This guy is just like that. He's saying that we are not for there for view, but he has been tried to get the views of, from the people, and he said that no, 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 we are not here for view. So, uh, like I say, he's a big liar. Okay. And deceiver. So, uh, well, people represent what kind of God they worship. So Allah is identified as a deceiver, best of the deceivers. And he even deceived Muhammad and Muslims. So we wouldn't be surprised that Muslims are using the same uh, same characteristic. But so uh, he brought up this Cairo manuscripts to you, which is dated 8th century, 9th century. Uh, what are uh, what what is it wrong with that manuscript? So why didn't you give him that five thousand dollars? You know, unfortunately, if I did not have the copy of that one, so I will be surprised. And I was so confused when he brought me that. I said, should I talk to him first, or should I start up my uh, booth over there? So I was so back and forth. I was confused. Should I talk to him? But I don't want to talk to him at the same time because I want to record that. 
because how stupid thing you can do that? That's a very stupid thing because that's not the, that's written by Dr. Tyre and I was, I've been telling that's not the Quran, but he said, no, 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 it is a Quran. So that's, that's the Musa. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. So that, yeah, so like I said, how, how can he do that? I mean, he probably, he probably making lie to people or probably he did not read that inside of the book. And finally, we have a conclusion for that. Probably he did not read inside and that's why he just come over. If you read those pages, like we have been telling 122, 123, 124, and that will kill him, that's not the Uthmanic Quran. It's just, it's the name and he look at it and he believe that that's the Uthmanic Quran. So, like I said, I was so confused. I, what to do with him, this guy. Brother Anthony, since you didn't pay him yet, will you pay Hatun? Because she's had that book on her shelf for ages. The same book. Can no, we play I, them? I, I, I have already with me, so I do have with me too. So I keep that money. I want that <laughs> one. So I do have that one. So I just kept it for myself. So let's see if somebody else want to bring Uthmani Quran. So you you got to hold on that money because you know yes. people mm -hmm. like stuff and then with brand new ketchup, since Total Christ is going to invest in the ketchup factory, yeah. ketchup which looks like blood and then um, footprints. Yeah, someone yeah. might think that. You never know. You never know, yeah. Um, Jai, um, have you got any thoughts, or of Christ, have you got any thoughts? What is wrong with Cairo manuscripts, um, Cairo Musaf, that um, doesn't deserve that $5,000? Apart from it not being the Osmanic <laughs> one that you, that you both have covered, <laughs> And we both have uh, made uh, videos about that. But apart from that, he made um, a couple of other statements that you can read any single reading of the Quran. He said all of the Qiraat can be read from this Mus'haf. And that's not true. That's another lie that he said. But that's not really our focus right now. So right now, uh, he has other Muslims. So he's a Muslim. He's another Muslim. Who, who is also a, one of these Dawa preachers, one of these Muslim propaganda guys, who actually has confirmed, he's confirmed that Uthman knows that this is not the Mus'haf of Uthman. So oh, if you'd wow. like, yeah, if you'd like, I can play this video. Now, it's meant to be kind of comedic, the way that I edited it together, but you can see for yourselves, um, if you want, sister, I can play it about 40 seconds or so, and we'll hear, we'll hear it straight from a Muslim. Hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Yep. Go on, brother. Okay. Here we go. We brought the Musaf Afman Radiyanu, an entire scan. So these guys, we brought it. They're still not here. This is the where's the money? Musaf Afman. What is that? Read. Okay. <laughs> You can't read! Okay, everyone. <laughs> Musaf of who? Uthman ibn Affan. Uh, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to ask um, Daughter of Christ. So he's showing the... Um, so the book is written, one side is Arabic, other side is in English. Mm -hmm. As he's showing the Arabic side, he says, it says Musaf of Uthman. No, in the English not. side, it says... Musaf attributed to the Uthman. No. Um, in, does, doesn't it not, does it not say that in Arabic too? No, in Arabic it says Al Mansub ila Uthman ibn Affan, attributed to Uthman ibn Affan. Uh, and it's saying it's the copy of um, uh, uh, Cairo. In Cairo, Cairo mm -hmm. which is um, the, 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 it's a mosque in Cairo. So yeah. it doesn't say Uthman's Quran, it says attributed to. Which so means you are, you are telling me he's lying about what it says on the covering of the book, so he didn't even read the covering of the book, I guess. No, he uh, he saw the word Uthman and ran with it. But we know already know that he can't read Arabic because he couldn't um, differentiate a footnote from a hadith. Um, <laughs> but he, he he can't read the Arabic, but he read the English and saw the word Uthman and ran with it. So it's funny that he tells our brother Anthony that he read when. Um, his prophet can't read and his own Quran tells him to read and he still doesn't read. Okay, thank you. So 
um, he's misrepresenting the Arabic and the title of the book on this side. Uh, Brother Jai, would you be kind enough and then start from the beginning? Sorry, I didn't want to. It wasn't my intention to cut it off, which I did. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. I'll start from the beginning. And you're about to see another Muslim come up and confirm. Once again, he's going to confirm that this is that that this is known to Uthman that this is not actually the Mus'haf of Uthman. So here we go. <laughs> We brought the Mus'haf Uthman radiyahu, an entire scan. So these guys, we brought it, they're still not here. This is the... Where's Uthman? Mus'haf Uthman! What is that? Read! This, okay. You can't read! Okay, everybody, read. Mus'haf of who? Uthman ibn Affan. Um, he, he knows that it's an attribution. He knows it's not um, like Uthman's actual Mus'haf. Mus'haf Uthman radiyahu, an entire scan. He knows it's not um, like Uthman's actual Mus'haf. Mus'haf Uthman! <laughs> give me the 5,000 first that you said you would <laughs> okay, give. Hold on. The Mus'haf Uthman okay, radiyahu, the that. entire okay. scan. All right. Um, Mus'haf Uthman! <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> can, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? He was holding his hand. And I was so confused, and he doesn't want to let me have the uh, that uh, book in my hands. So that was really, really <laughs> embarrassment for him. So. And did you hear what Farid said? He knows it's yeah. an attribution. An yes. attribution. He knows. He knows. So that means he's lying. So that means he's lying. Right. An attribution means I can attribute something to you right now and say you wrote it. It's not the same. Yes. So there we go. We have another Muslim, popular Muslim YouTuber, speaker, Dawa Gandist, confirming that Uthman knows, he knows that this is not the Mus'haf of Uthman. Yeah, he just wants the money. <laughs> so then the question is, if he knew that wasn't the Quran of Uthman, and he had eight months to kind of meet up with the challenge. And he was not, I don't, did you force him, um, brother, to like turn up the co t turn up the park and then bring the Musa? Or it was his choice to pick up last Sunday and then come and ask for money because he claimed that he has the Musa. So why, why do you lie? Like in the title of the book, it says, inside it says, this is not it. Why would you lie? I have no idea why he did that. I have no idea. And we never for I mean, we have been waiting for last four months since he came to last time about the footnotes. And then he talked about with me, uh, I 3146. After that, he was running. And suddenly he just show up on this last Sunday. So with the Quran, so I have no idea what was his mind. Uh, he he come with the camera. I, I doubted he read the book. I, I doubt it. Whatever the brother, the brother saying that, but I doubt it. He read the book because I think he just bought that. Looks like a very very new. Uh, so he probably just see the cover of it, and he just hop into the park. That's all. If he read that a little bit, so he won't even do that stupid thing. Um, then the question, let me ask the daughter of Christ first. Um, daughter of Christ, um, Quranic manuscripts are, those manuscripts are expensive. I think mine was like $500 or something when I bought it um, years back. Um, so you pay that much money. It's a lot of my money and then you pay, you pay for shipping, all those kind of things. Uh, what might be the reason that you don't read it? Or you yes. don't know what inside it says? Or what even the covering says? What might be the reasons? Because he didn't buy it to read it. He said, I'll invest 500, I'll get 5,000. <laughs> 10 times the amount. <laughs> that's, that's funny, that's funny, that's yes. That's he didn't funny. buy it to read it. He said, attribute it to Osman, that's good enough. It's got Osman's uh, name on it. Uh, so he he just like, okay, I've got this much money which I'm getting from my catch-up business. 
let me invest that money to manuscript and then this is one of the earliest they had i buy it and then i can put them in my bookshelf 500 to 5000 10 times the profit yeah That's it's a good profit it's good profit like if anyone needs money we can we can encourage them to get get on with that business um jai what do you think someone pays that much money for a book and doesn't even read the title or doesn't doesn't know what inside it says so um yeah it wouldn't surprise me if this was something that was given to him or donated to him and and you know they're trying to kind of meet this challenge it wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me uh, another thing that wouldn't surprise me was he thinks yeah maybe he's maybe he does invest maybe he's invested in a lot of ketchup companies himself uh maybe he's investing like you know 500 for this i get 5000 back i mean that you know it's a good investment so maybe he's thinking in those terms i, I can't really pin this guy all i know is that he definitely is a liar and even according to farid he admits that Othman knows he knows so if he knows uh, Farid is telling the truth here, unless Farid is a liar too, <clears throat> then he's a liar. If he's not a liar, then he's ignorant. And if he's ignorant, then he shouldn't be having this big platform teaching all these Muslims and, you know, leading all these people. So either he's a liar or he's ignorant. And either which way, he shouldn't be trusted. Uh, okay. Then my question to Anthony, Brother Anthony. Where is that five thousand dollars in your house? Don't give me, don't answer that question. Else, it might put your house in danger. Uh, so, what are your plans now? So, you got this five thousand dollars still. Uh, hope, hopefully, you have it. Uh, does your ch uh, challenge still stand, or what did you decide? What, uh, what, what is your step for next week? Yeah, we we have the same challenge. We don't want to raise the price i mean either a lot of people they're offering me okay i'll give some put some money so we make it ten thousand but we want to keep it as it is so but from next week uh, you know thanks to sheikh uthman now we have other standee uh, which is i'm going to be putting probably live other standees coming over the sheikh uthman brought the original quran uthmani quran so people they will definitely will see his second standee in our booth and uh, that is very, I'm very excited for that. So, and then we're going to have this uh, book over there to show and ask for people, randomly people, we're going to ask for if, what you think, if it's Uthmani Quran. So if it's not, so why Sheikh Uthman brought it that one? So we're going, that's what our plan going to be there from next week. Well, um, how about, how about, so, I think four of us know Islam is the religion of miracles. <laughs> would you would you not have a pro like would you not agree with me? There might be the possibility that even though Ut Caliph Uthman was killed in 656, he was still able to compile a Quran around 8th century and 9th century while he was dead. Like, why do we think he couldn't? Why he couldn't do? Um, he couldn't put the Quran together approximately um, a century um, after his death. Like that, 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 that people do lots of things in Islam. Uh, if somebody will have a miracle, why not? They will. They deserve five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like Islam is the religion of miracles. Mm -hmm. so yes. That Caliph Uthman maybe wrote it from grave while he's being punished and then magically it appeared in this world. Oh, if somebody will do that, we have a $5,000 for them. Okay. Yeah, we are okay. ready for that miracle. Okay. Um, I think thought of Christ investment is good. So what we will do is we will get a little bit ketchup and then find... A manuscript and then get Brother Jai's uh, running shoes and then step on it to make it like look very, very old and then pour a little bit tea on it so it will make it look much older. And then we will turn up the park and then try to get your $5,000. That's our plan. 
So I'm, I'm ready for it, yes. I'm surprised no one has tried that already. <laughs> like, why are we the first people to try this? So, sister, you got the manuscript. Get your tea. <laughs> yeah. And brother Jai, please um, let's borrow one of your shoes. Now we're, we're sorted. Yeah, we got good investment plans here. So you are you are going to be back in part uh, next Sunday, next Sa weekend. Tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow. It's Sunday, Saturday. We are there Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so where is the park? Tell, tell, tell people where the park is. If anyone lives in that area, they can come and say hi to you or they can come and engage with people. It's a very easy if they can Google Balboa Park is a one of the big park uh, in California. There's a lot of there's zoo. There's a lot of activities, and it's a very famous. If they Google it, San Diego, Balboa Park, that will pop up right away. There is a zoo. You, you mean like zoo? Zoo, zoo. Yeah, zoo. that's right. Yeah, zoo, 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 oh, zoo. Yeah. Zoo. yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that was. Zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should walk there when you were there. You can see, you can go there just the walking distance. Okay, the zoo, so yeah. you will be there Saturday and Sunday, and you yes. will have a stand with the yes. Cairo manuscript. Yes. Um, where you will be asking questions while this is not from Uthman, why do Muslims claim it is the Caliph Uthman's Quran, correct? Yes. Okay. We will go first to Dawa. Those Dawa people, they do Dawa Saturday and Sunday, we will ask them. What you think about this book? This is a Quran, Uthmani Quran, or this is something else? So we'll see a view from other people. Okay, yeah, it's good. It will be good to kind of get uh, response from them. Just watch out for like I don't know if any animals run away from zoo or something. You don't want anyone to get harmed. Um, Doctor mm -hmm. Jai, Brother Jai, do you have any comments or any thoughts on the topic before we um, send? Um, brother Anthony away. Oh, thanks, Brother Anthony, for bringing uh, Uthman out of hiding for four months. Um, you, because of the, you know, the, you flashed the money and he came out. He's been disappearing since the footnote days. So thank you for the laugh that you gave us, Brother. Uh, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, may maybe there are some uh, lambs or, or sheep in this zoo. I, I know that the, the ones who are famous for eating the Quran, they're, they're like the house ones, they're the tame ones, but maybe there's a, like a, a descendant. You know how Muslims, they say like, <clears throat> they have like the name Qureshi or Sayyid or something, they want to be like the descendants of Muhammad. Well, may, maybe there's a sheep or a goat that's a descendant of the goat that actually ate the Quran of, of Aisha. So maybe that, I don't know if that counts for the challenge, <clears throat> but maybe we can find a descendant of this goat and we can try to, you know, get some DNA of the um, Quran of, of Aisha. So I don't know. It's not Uthmanic, but it's some early Quran. Maybe we can find it in some goat or sheep in one of these San Diego zoos. Yeah, it's from like lineage. It, you can claim like this goes to the lineage. <laughs> Take us back to the sheep which ate the Quran. Yeah. Um, okay. See, everyone is like so creative here. Um, Brother, a um, couple of people are asking, um, so you are at the park at the weekends. A um, couple of people are asking, how do you pay for all those things you bring to the park? Leaflets you have in the park, the goods you have, how do you pay for those things? Do you pay them from your pocket? Um, maybe this might be a good time. Um, if anyone wants to kind of support what you do financially um, after they prayfully consider how, can, how people can do that. Yes, sister, thank you very much. That's a beauty of uh, what I'm doing. This is I'm doing with my heart. And uh, like I'm telling, I'm a businessman. And this is all funding coming from my business. I do not take even penny from anybody, even people. They offer me on that, uh, on this, uh, on Balboa Park. So I don't take any money from anybody. So just I need a prayer from you guys. That's all I care. I don't need anything. God has been providing me everything. The Father has been giving money, every little things, what I need for that work to done. Okay. Um, so if people's conscious is different than what has been um, said, um, just directly get in touch with him through his YouTube account. Um, brother, what are the practical ways people can pray for you? 
just whenever they pray, then when they have a time to just pray, use my name and that ministry, that's all. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for being uh, bringing laughter to heart of daughter of Christ and um, making joy to kind of make those nice videos. So we appreciate and thank you very much for um, proposing that $5,000. I already got some plans how I can get that money from you, but hopefully we will. $5,000, like you can kiss the it's black tough. one a couple of times, brother. Yes, you're right. Because especially you are close to uh, Saudi Arabia. It's take like a seven hours. For us, it's take a long time. Yeah, so from yeah, here, yeah, if I can do two trips yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, we are um, very grateful uh, the way Lord is using you to um, deal with those accusations against um, Christian scripture, against our glorious gospel. So thank you very much for turning up to the park um, week after week and faithfully serving our um, crucified and risen Lord. So we are grateful for that. Um, have you, you got any last quotes before I send you away? I have nothing. I appreciate for uh, for your uh, calling me here. And thank you, Brother Jay and Sister, Sister of Christ. Thank you very much and keep in prayers. God bless you, Brother. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, Okay, that was um, Brother Anthony from um, Bible or Quran YouTube channel. Um, if you are not following what's happening that part of the uh, world, uh, please go and check his channel out. Um, Thought of Christ or Jai, do you have anything to add or say what we discussed tonight? I'll just give some final words just for both of our topics that are are kind of my, my concluding remarks are that we do not advocate for the, the the killings of anybody for not wearing their hijabs properly or improperly. We do not advocate for the death and the evil that Islam teaches to do. We do not lie and say that we have manuscripts from Uthman that don't exist. We want to encourage all the viewers, all of the Muslims who are going to hear this and all the non-Christians to repent, to turn away from your sins, to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ because he died and he rose again. And we want you to follow him. We, we pray that you do and that we can... Uh, share and you know brotherhood and sisterhood in Christ with you and that you can have eternal life and your sins will be forgiven so those are my final words so thank you so much um, Sister Hatoon for having me and Daughter of Christ and everyone else who's watching I just want to say God bless you all and thank you so much thank you very much brother um, Daughter of Christ any last comments just for people to notice that whenever Islam is mentioned now in our times in the news, it's always to do with death, destruction, tragedy, sadness, and um, uh, that on on that side of that lady who died in Iran. And um, if not in the West, it's to do with lying, sheikhs coming and lying uh, blatantly for their religion. It's just the spirit of lying and murder, um, like the devil is a thief, he's a murderer, he's a liar. We want all Muslims to notice that our Bible tells us about that, and if it's that if that's linked to your religion, then you need to leave that religion, because that is is of the devil, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You find peace. You will not find any of um, those associations with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, thank you very much, sister. Um, also, we forgot to uh, look into what is happening in Britain. So. Um, in Leicester, uh, as well as it kind of spread the Birmingham um, group of uh, Mr. Muslims, mainly, mainly Mr. Muslims are um, trying to take over um, not sure how to verbalize that nicely. But they think this land is theirs and then they don't want um, they want kind of, they're pushing for violence against the Hindu community. Um, in uh, Leicester as well as in Birmingham and lots of um, people from Dawa gangs are coming alongside of them 
and uh, pushing for it. So um, overall, I'm sure some of you already picked up. Um, Mr. Policeman is not there to protect you unless unless you are Mr. Muslim. So watch out for that. Sadly, we need to finish the live stream, but um, hopefully in another live stream, we will look deeper on what's happening in Britain, in Leicester, as well as in Birmingham between, not between actually how Muslim communities um, reacting and dealing with the, um, dealing with people who are not Muslim. Um, Brother Jai and Daughter of Christ, thank you very much for um, spending this evening with me, as well as thank you very much everyone who joined us in chat by God's grace. We will see you um, on another live stream, or we will see you at Speakers Call on Sunday, or we will see you at the bosom of the Father, whichever comes first. God bless you all.